Today is Thursday, October 6, 2022. It is also day 70 of JavaScript. And today, um, I'm going to do a simple card using either grid or just, um, or, or flex, I don't know yet. But I generated this image using Open Art AI, which is kind of like a dolly alternative. Um, and I just posted it on Pinterest because I actually need to copy the image address. And with CodePen, I currently can't just upload an image. So that's why I put it in Pinterest and then copy the image address. So first things first is go into the body tag, do a div, give it a class called container, which is going to contain my cards. So I'm going to do my first card. I'm going to give it a class of card. And then I'm going to... Go into my CSS and target the container. Um, we use dots to target classes. I'm going to give it a CSS property called border. And then the values, it's five pixels in thickness, solid line, and, a, and opposed to like a dotted line, and then a black colored line, which is what it is by default. You already see it. Um, to give it a height so it actually looks like a box, I'm going to do, let's say, 100 bh, which is the vertical height of the screen. To remove the spacing around the actual container, I can target the body. Um, which is what holds the container and just um, zero out any margin and padding that comes by default with some browsers and then also set box sizing to border box because that also helps with that and some other things which i won't get into because i don't know it 100 percent myself yet so <laughs> yeah um and then inside i also have a card so i'll target the card as well um border Five pixels let's do solid and then red so that's my card um yeah so I also wanted to have a height for that so let's do I don't know 300 pixels let me see what that looks like here all right so this is what it looks like um, I'll also give it a width um, I'm not really sure what width I'm going to give it 400 pixels Let's do 600 because I want them to be like, kind of like that. All right, so I'm going to just copy this and make multiple of these. So let's do three. So now I have three, which is perfect. And then what I want is to have them displayed um, towards the center. So I could do this two ways, either display flex margin 50 pixels or display grid i'm going to try display grid so i'm going to take the container give it a display of grid um and then i'll say i'll try something place content center let's see if that works there we go beautiful and then with that i could also do a grid gap and set it to 1em so that there's spacing in between each of the cards and then I could also um, do some margin here. Where would be the card? The card would be here. Um, not margin, maybe the container. I can give it a padding of 20 pixels, just that there's spacing between kind of everything here. Maybe 50 pixels would actually work. How about I give it a padding from the top and bottom 50 pixels and from the right and left, zero pixels. All right, much better. All right, so for the card, I'm actually going to have two things in the card. I'm going to have a div, which is going to be an ID um, image. So it's going to hold my image. And then I'm also going to have a div called class content so that I can have my content in there, which is going to be something like h1 um let's do a paragraph so p tag forum tab close p tag and then an a tag that leads to nowhere that's what the hashtag means href stands for hypertext reference it just it's where your link is going to go to um i'm going to call it button for now all right so those are the three things that i would want in my card um, I'm just going to go ahead and copy them into the rest of them. So I'll copy that into here and here as well.
I'm just wondering why there's an extra div. Oh, it's because there's three cards. Okay. So I'm just going to add one here because I didn't copy the div. I'm so confused. What did I do? Okay, there we go. So there's one div. So card ends here. That's card one. Oops. And then this one ends here. But that's card three. And then there's one at the top. Okay, beautiful. All right. So that's it. Um, so then at this point, um, I'm going to make the red boxes, which are the cards, also um, have a display of grid so that I can actually make a grid, right, of two columns. So I'll do display of grid and I'll do grid template columns to tell it how many columns I want. So basically, if I just put 1fr, 1fr, I'm basically telling um, CSS to like, hey, separate the card into two equally spaced columns and that's what 1fr 1fr is same thing as 50 pixels um 50 percent 50 percent all right so now we have that which is beautiful if i just go here to pinterest right click copy image address and then i go into the let's say um did i give it a oh i did well that's a problem let me change this to a class because i want to target all of them not just one of them so class image and then class image so now in css i can do dot image and set background url and paste that url in there and then i can do background size cover to make sure that it covers the entirety of the container beautiful and then um, to fix how it kind of looks i would actually go into um, what do you call it to write the content box and give it some padding i think it would help if i just gave these things a border well yeah so this one could be border five pixels let's do solid green and then the dot content and you have a border of five pixels solid blue all right so we have our red box green box blue box um, so the blue box, I want there to be some padding inside it so that it's kind of like the paragraph and the button are centered. So to do that, I'll just do padding. I'll do either maybe 40 pixels, see what that looks like. That's too much. So how about 20? All right, that's better. And then what I could do is, let's see. Um, let me actually add the H1s. I think I'm just going to say like a name for a game. So I'll do Blowers, Blowers Mind, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll do like Primal Warfare. I'm just trying to come up with like a name for, I don't know, a random game. All right, so I'll do the same thing for the rest of the cards. So let me just do that. Um, And then here as well. All right. So that's what it's looking like. Uh, let me look at the button. So I probably should have given the each of the buttons a class of, let's say, button. I think that would help. And then paste that for all of the links so that when I access the actual class, I can change all of them. So in CSS, I can do dot button now. And to remove the underline, um, I would do text decoration set that to none because right now it's set to underline um i could do background and then i can just get my color picker and kind of do something like i don't know i'm trying to get a color let me move this up here um maybe something like this color and then paste that in there so now it's going to have that and then i can change the color to be white and then i can give it some padding of let's say 10 pixels top and bottom 20 pixels left and right and i can also do a border radius of let's say 20 pixels so that it's around and then i can change actually what it says in html i think i'll say i don't know play or something um but put that in here and then put that in here all right beautiful 
Um, and then I think that's it. I would actually just take the um, paragraph. So I'll do dot content and P, right? So I'm accessing the content and then the paragraph. And I'll just actually change it to say, not to say, but to have a margin bottom of like, let's say 10 pixels so that they're spacing between the actual paragraph. Uh, well, that doesn't work because I have box sizing footer box on, so that's great. Um, margin from the bottom 10 pixels. How about if I do 40? There we go. 20. Okay, let me save that and reload. So that's what it's looking like. And then maybe what I need to do is actually go to the um, card and give it a minimum height of 300 pixels, but really the height that I want it to be is the minimum content so that it actually reaches to the end of the content unless beautiful, really beautiful. Okay, great. So basically the height, the minimum height that it could be is 300 pixels, which is what it was before. Um, but as long as it's over 300 pixels, if the content is over 300 pixels, then it's going to stay, uh, it's going to adapt to that, the height of the content, right? The minimum content. So that's perfect. Um, great. And then the last thing I would want to do is get a hover. Um, so I guess this is JavaScript. I haven't even done any JavaScript. So I guess I'll just do that with JavaScript, even though I can do that really, really easily with um, CSS. If I just do button and then give it a hover state, I can give it a background um, of, let's say, I don't know, like a darker shade. Copy that paste that in there. So now if I hover over play, it should turn dark. Beautiful, right? So if I do that here, it should turn dark. Now I can do the same thing with JavaScript. Let's see if I remember. First things first, I actually have to target the um, the uh, the actual buttons. So I'll do a variable called button. Um, and I'm not going to say button. I'm going to say like button list because really what I'm doing is I'm going to use um, a function that takes the buttons and puts them in a either a list or an array. Let me pull up my notes to make sure that I give the right information. Um, so it's either going to return a list or an array. Let's see. Oops, wrong thing. It's supposed to be in JavaScript. All right, I think I did this like day three or something. Um, nope, day two. Let's see. Nope, day one. Nope, am I confused? Yes, I am. Oh, it was day two. Day three. Ah, uh, day four. All right, so here we go. It returns an array or a collection. So get elements by class name because if you notice, all of the A tags have a class of button. So because of that, it's going to return a collection. So I'm going to say button array instead of list and then what i'll do is i'll access the document so the document is basically the browser's copy of your html page um the goal you want to do is to set the goal you want to do what i mean your goal is to set the button array to um an array of all of the html buttons and to do that you need to access those html buttons so to do that, you actually access the document, which is, again, a copy of your HTML page, which contains your buttons. Now, the reason we don't access HTML directly is because JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language, meaning it only works with objects, and your HTML elements are not objects. This A tag is not an object, it's an element. So that's why the browser makes a copy of your HTML page in which it converts all your elements to actual objects. And that copy is called the document or the DOM, the document object model. And so in JavaScript, we refer, we refer to um, it as the document. So we take the document and we use functions to access um, those objects. Well, technically they're called nodes, but that's besides the point. I would like to call them objects point blank. It's easier to understand. Um, access those objects from the DOM. So I'll just do document dot and then put in my function. So again, I'm going to do get elements plural s by class 
name. Let me just make sure I did that right. Get elements by class name. And then I could actually just put the class name in there. So I do button. All right, now what that's going to do is going to, actually I can show you what it does. I can do console.log button array, and then I can open up developer tools, and you'll see that it'll actually return an array of all of the buttons. So let me save that and do control shift, actually maybe, let me do it here, control shift I. And if I pull up the console, it gives me, it returns to me a collection, right, or an array with all of my buttons. What did I just do? Okay, so I have button zero, right, and it's highlighting it for me as well, which is pretty cool. So button A, button A, another button right there. So that's what it's returning to me. So what I have to do with that is actually iterate over it because I can't just do, hey, change the background color to this. Um, no, because they're actually inside an array. So I have to individually like get them out. So what I'll do for that is a for loop. So I'll do four and then little parentheses, and then I'll put in little brackets. Okay, so here I'm gonna first add a counter. So I'm gonna call it, let's say button count. I'm pretty sure I have to make it a variable actually. So variable button count, I'm gonna set it equal to zero. So then what I wanna happen is as long as button count is less than the button the length of the button array so button array dot length then what I want to happen is the button count to go up one or to just increase basically so basically we're counting so this is kind of going to be the individual um, button um, so then what I'll do now is I can actually do let's say button array and I can tell it what to do so I could do button array and then get the button count so basically what I'm saying right now is for each button basically because it's counting each of the buttons inside the array so for each button inside the button array I want the following to happen so this is where I actually input the stuff that I want. So for me, I want to change the CSS. That's kind of where I want to start. So I have to target the CSS by saying style. Beautiful. Now what do I want to change in CSS? Well, I want to change the background um, of the, uh, what do you call it, of the button. So I'll do dot background. And then what do I want to change it to? So I'll say equal sign and then whatever I want to change it to, I'll put it in quotations. So I'm going to change it to this color over here. By the way, I'm just going to comment this out because um, this is how you do it in CSS, but I'm doing it with JavaScript. Anyway, paste that in there. All right, so now what that's going to do is actually change it permanently, but that's a problem. I don't want to actually just change the color. Um, as you can see that it just did do that. I want it to only change when I hover over the button. And when I leave, when I stop hovering, I want it to change back to its original um, what do you call it? Uh, it's original color. So I'll create a function for that. So I'll do variable function. No, not function. Variable on, let's say, button hover. And I'll set it equal to function, and then I'll put what I want to happen in here. So, um, which is basically this. This is what I want to happen. So I'll put that in there. And then I'll tell, um, the button... to copy, hold up. So I'm gonna try to see if I could just copy this because I've never done this before with like, I've done it with IDs but not classes. So let's see if this works. So I'll copy this um, and then instead of setting the background, let's see if I could add an event listener and then tell it to listen for when it's clicked on, not when it's clicked on, when it's, um, when the mouse is over it and when the mouse is over I want it to pass or to call this function on button hover so let's see if that actually works oh beautiful it did hold up let me reload and make sure that actually works let me close this up beautiful yes it does work beautiful 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 that's amazing okay that's great I'm actually really proud of myself I don't know how I 
just happened okay let me let me just kind of go back and see what i did because i just like just copy okay so basically what i did is i created a function um on button hover i already have this so basically inside the function i want to write whatever i want to happen and so i want the background of the button to change but i only want this to happen when the button is hovered over so i took I actually re like i had to actually iterate over the buttons again so that i can make a new thing and say okay for each button i want them to listen to when the mouse is over them and when the mouse is over them i want them to call the unbutton hover function which is going to change the background color to a deeper shade of blue which it actually did so here, when I'm in three, two, one, I hover over it, it changes to a darker color. Now here's the problem. If I uh, do that, it stays that way. So even if I kind of move my mouse off it, it still stays that color and that's a problem. So uh, I'll create another function called, let's see, variable on button no hover. And then set that equal to a function and then whatever I want to happen here. So again, I'm just going to copy this. Um, yeah, so let me copy this. Do I have two extra? No, I don't. Okay. All right, let me copy this. So basically, again, I'm iterating. I'm accessing. This is basically just me accessing what did I just do. This is basically just me accessing the buttons and then saying, okay, for the buttons, this is what I want to happen. So for me, I would want to go back to the original color. So that would end up being this one over here, the nicer, not the nicer, the lighter shade. Um, and then I only want that to happen when I say, uh, when, when, uh, when the button is, well, I'll show you. When the button is not being hovered on anymore there's actually an event handler for that by the way that's what these are called event handlers mouse over click mouse leave so basically um what i want to happen is the following so i want to take again i'm accessing all the buttons and i'm just adding an event listener to them and in this time i'm just going to change the event hand handler to be mouse leave so that when um the mouse leaves the button right so the mouse is listening for when the mouse leave not the mouse excuse me the button is listening for when the mouse leaves the button um and then it's going to pass in not this function but the unbutton no hover function paste it in there save that reload now if i hover over three two one it becomes a darker shade and if i leave it becomes it goes back to its original color and that is basically what it is let me zoom in so again three two one hover over leave and it's kind of the same the equivalent of css hover which i could have just done oh, see why css is amazing all of this is the same thing to with like of this it's the same thing as this it's like crazy all right anyway um it's just because this is a js log i had to do javascript so i decided to do that all right, there's another thing. Um, even if I zoom in, there's a problem. The container, which is the black box, doesn't reach the height of its content. So I could do the same thing that I did for the uh, the card. So I can give the height, uh, not the container, wait, not the height. I can give the container a minimum height of 100 BH, but ideally I want the height to be its minimum content as long as it's not you know, lower than 100 BH. Beautiful. Now it's all the way down. All right, let me do control zero because I was zoomed in. Um, and then, oh, this is a problem. When I hover over, all of them actually do that. So I probably should have done IDs. Well, that's a story for another day. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm not fixing that today. Um, I the way to fix this is to not do classes and just do IDs. So give each button an ID or each A tag an ID and then just change the color individually. That's what I would have done. Um, if there's another way, I haven't learned it yet. Again, I'm just like learning here. All right, so let me make these things pretty by removing the borders. So removing the border of the container, uh, the border of the card, the border of the, I guess I didn't give the card a, Oh, I just deleted it. Okay, and this one too. Let me save, 
the road so this is what it's looking like um, I'm going to go and give the container a background of hashtag D3, 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 which is kind of like a grayish color. And then that does that. And then I'll give the cards a background of hashtag EE, EE, EE. -E. So E6 times. So it looks like that. And that's pretty much it for today. Um, and if I do this, well, it's responsive as it's going to get. Um, let me open it up. Control Shift I. Let me open it up in mobile view. If I do, let me actually open this up in Firefox because it has a better mobile view, I believe. At least that's what I think. All right, let me paste that in here. Nope. Let me do Control Shift I. Mobile view. iPhone. 11. Um, so I think that happens because I have, let's see, do I have some margin? I think I have the container. Or is it the card? Maybe it's just because it's like small. Oh yeah, I have padding. What if I remove this? Save that. Go back in here, reload. No, it doesn't make much of a difference. Alright, so... That's a story for another day. I just wanted to check if it was like mobile responsive, but eh, I think it's, it's okay, I guess. It's really not responsive because it's too small, but it works. All right, so that's it for today. Um, I'm going to go now. Bye.